Hello everyone. I'm North Hempstead Town Supervisor Judy Bosworth and I, along with our town board, are proud to present At Home with North Hempstead, a series of special programs for children, seniors, as well as entertainment for residents of all ages. I hope you enjoyed this special presentation and check back often for new content. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me in this video. So we're gonna be creating this really beautiful, it's like a, a hand tree kind of, but we're gonna just focus a lot on just doing some color mixing. And this is a pretty cool and simple project, but the result is very, very beautiful, right? And you're making your hand <laughs> as a tree, which is pretty cute. All right, so to get started, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got some brushes so we're going to be using some round brushes and some flat brushes. All right. And make sure that you have a black permanent sharpie. Make sure this one's permanent, not washable. All right. Have some kind of paper plate or just something that you can mix colors in. Paper towels. And we're going to be using pencil. Yeah, forgot the pencil. So these brushes, yeah, I think those are good. And then some acrylic paint. These are the colors you would want to have. If you have, that's great. If you don't have brown, for brown, you can really mix um, all colors. will create the brown, really. Yeah. And also some kind of cup of water. I'm using a uh, watercolor paper, but if you have like a canvas or something else you want to paint on, feel free to do that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out where you want to position your hand on the paper. All right, so remember your hand is supposed to look like a tree. So I'm trying to like have mine curved a little bit or something like that. Um, yeah, I think this is good, but you don't want to have your hand like straight. I mean, you could but I like it when it has some curve and then you're just going to want to very very gently using your pencil trace around your hand all right just like that you don't really want to draw like add too much pressure on the pencil because we're going to be painting this so we don't want the pencil mark to show up but what you're going to end up with is just a beautiful trace of your hand <laughs> we're not making turkeys we're going to be turning this into a beautiful tree it's really cool, all the different things you can turn your, your hand into. Next, you're going to want to draw just some very light trees, kind of. Yeah, kind of like trees. Okay. And just draw those around. Well, not trees, my bad. Triangles. <laughs> yeah, drawing like different um, size and shapes of triangles. I don't know why is that trees. Oh my god. All right, so that's how it'll look like. All right, I hope you can see, hopefully. I didn't want to do this with the, I didn't want to outline it with marker. So you're going to want to use your flat brush. I recommend to use the flat brush with this. Make sure you wet it a bit. And you're going to use some brown. Now, if you want to make your tree black or yellow or another color, you can do that. It doesn't have to be brown. Um, if you want to make it peach, um, or any co other color, you can do that. But first, actually, let's trace the tree because it might be easy for some people if you already kind of like trace the, <laughs> I say tree, but I mean your hand. If you trace the outline of your hand and then you paint it in, I think it just helps guide your eye a little better so that way you don't paint too much outside of it. So I'm just very gently tracing around it. I'm trying to be, you know, as nice with the lines as I can, but it's okay if the line is not, um, if it's a little jagged and stuff, it's all right. All right. This will also make it easier for you to just see what I'm working with, with the hand and the tree and the, and stuff. Okay. So after we do that, then we're going to color. <laughs> That's just so it'd be easier to outline before we paint it. 
all right i think that looks good right now you don't really have to outline the leaves it's really just your hand i mean the triangles <laughs> why can't i remember the it's the grass technically yeah okay so back to your flat brush you're gonna want to make some brown get some brown if you do not have brown but you want to mix brown um i know that if you just mix like yellow blue and red that should give you a brown all right so really take your time right now to just paint the whole thing in if you want you can add like some shading and stuff to it but i'm not really going to do that but if you want to add make some parts of the hand like a little lighter add some highlights and just make it look a bit more realistic that could that would be really cool so please feel free to do that on your piece and when you're painting, just be very mindful of the outline, okay? Because, yeah, if you do go out of the line, it's okay, because we can always just paint it some more. We'll just have a bigger tree. Well, hand. <laughs> yeah. So try to paint one part before you move to the other parts, because with acrylic paint, it definitely dries faster. So you don't want to be all over the place. And we're going to try to blend them in. If you're using watercolor, I would say you can follow along um, pretty similarly. Also, if you want, you could use markers for this. When we're going to be using, doing, oh, also, I know I had added, you can also use what is called Q-tips. If you want to exper experiment a bit with the Q-tips, um, you'll see later on when adding the dots. That could be fun instead of the round brush or just do like a mix of both of them and see what happens. All right, so we're doing pretty good with the painting right now. The hand is coming out really nice. Looking good, looking good. <laughs> All right, and I'm just trying to be careful a bit with the outlines. Sorry, the yeah, the outline. That's, that's what I meant to say. Because I've been pretty good so far and I'm trying to not mess up. And we'll probably go over the hand one more time. Just so that way it's darker. Because it looks dark now, but it tends to dry a bit light, which is weird. But, oh well. <laughs> what can I do about it? It's also a bit shiny um, until it dries. So you might see some of the shininess through the camera. But that's just how the paint is. All right. So after this, um, this project, it's really just a nice project to focus on color mixing. And also just to give you, yeah, it's a nice way to experiment with mixing different colors and making dots. So this is kind of inspired a bit by pointillism. And pointillism, pointillism is very cool because it's creating images from dots and not only that but it also has a lot to do with colors and it's like having the your eye blend the color rather than you blending the colors uh, so if you look at pointillism some art from far away the art will look you know like a painting you know like it was yeah like a painting it won't look like dots but if you look up close you'll start to see like all the little dots that make the painting. Now we're not going to be doing something as complex as that. This one is a bit more simpler because our dots are bigger. But if you were to do very, very tiny dots, then from far away, it would look, it wouldn't look like dots really. Yeah. So this is kind of inspired by pointillism a bit. All right. So now we're going to go with our pointy brush. All right. And the dots are kind of just to represent leaves. Now you can make a rainbow tree if you want. You can make a fall tree. Um, you can use random colors. You can also, if you want, just outline where your leaves are gonna go. But all I'm doing right now is I'm using some red and I'm making dots closest to the hand. So we're gonna have a lot of red closer to the hand. Just like that. Okay, that's looking good. Also because red, is a darker color so the red is kind of like to represent a bit of shadow in a way that's why I'm so I'm usually gonna put the darker colors closer to the hand and then as <laughs> as it goes out we're gonna 
go with lighter colors like some yellows and some oranges all right so i think yeah just add a little bit more red that's looking pretty good here i'm just outlining kind of like where i want the leaves to stop because i decided i want to paint the sky also <laughs> so that's why you can't can, you can you can kind of see my outline yeah barely but you can kind of see it all right so add a little bit more red and if you i mean it's, it's i think it's good if you can try to make different sizes with the dots but it's okay if you're not able to also experiment with the q-tip like i said that'll be fun so next we're gonna go with some green you're gonna want to have some blues and some greens now when you're mixing green you want to remember that you don't need equal amount of colors because the blue it's more powerful like the intensity it's yeah it's more intense than the yellow so that's why you technically don't want to have too much blue but it also depends if you're trying to make a darker green because here we are trying to make a darker green kind of so we would want to have more blue and less yellow but if you were trying to make a lighter green then you would want to have more yellow and less blue so you always want to be mindful of certain things like that when you're mixing colors because it's usually not always equal part and stuff okay so i'm gonna add the green around where the red is and as a reminder red and green are complementaries so it'll be cool to see how they blend into each other and also hopefully when you're done with this piece maybe you can like place it somewhere a bit far away and look at it and see how the colors blend in because your eyes are supposed to do the blending really like to blend the colors in together with all the little dots which i think is really cool that the eye has that capability our eyes are pretty cool okay as you can see i'm making just some very very slight different um sizes with the dots not too different but pretty slight and now we're gonna make some orange same thing with the orange so red is more intense than the yellow so you need more yellow um a good amount of yellow just don't use too much red because it'll be hard to get an orange if you use a lot of red so you probably want like two-thirds yellow one part one-third red kind of okay unless you want to make like a dark orange kind of but for this one i kind of mostly want like a medium orange ish <laughs> color all right that orange looks good. It, it might you might not be able to see the orange through the camera but it is orange <laughs> it does look more red orange so if I want to make it more orangey, I would add some more yellow. But I kind of don't mind it. I kind of like it like this, so I'm going to keep it. But this is looking like a, like the red and green is looking like something very Christmassy and festive right now. But once we add the yellows and some blues, then it's going to well it's going to change it a bit cuz we're going to have those other colors <laughs> and stuff. You can also practice mixing on the paper. So how you would do that is you would get some red and, you know, with your brush, some red and yellow, like both colors on the same brush. And you don't blend it on the paper, but then you just start um, placing it, like making the points on the paper. And that would just naturally have it blend in. That one is a bit more risky because there's no guarantee that it's actually gonna blend and stuff but it's fun to try that out you can definitely try that out so i'm gonna add some yellows yeah i'm mostly gonna stay towards the outer edge with the yellows but i might add some yellows on the inner side but not too much mostly on the outer edge i might also add some lighter greens yeah i think some lighter greens would be good yeah i mean yeah like a yellow green <laughs> so i'll probably mix uh yeah i'll probably just mix a yellow green to add to that okay that's looking very nice 
Mm, I'm thinking if I want to add some blues to the tree because I know I'm going to add blue to the sky. If I do that, I probably just have to make a lighter shade of blue and then a darker shade of blue. Yeah, just so that way they don't like both look the same kind of and stuff. All right, this is looking good, looking good. Also, my yellow, it's a bit neon. So, yeah, it's a bit neon yellow. <laughs> but just an up close with what we've got so far. I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. And then we still have the grass to do and the sky and everything. So we're maybe like halfway there. Yeah, I think we're about halfway there. All right, so I'm gonna probably have to start moving a little quicker just so I can make sure I get to the sky and everything. But I'll probably wanna add a little bit more orange, a little bit more, yeah, yellow green and light blue. Those are probably, yeah, I probably just have to add those some more. And then that'll be good. But I think it's looking pretty well. All right, I'm just adding some of the yellow to the green that we had made before because that will help create a darker green. My bad, a lighter green. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. You see how adding the yellow, it just makes it much lighter. Yeah, and look that and it, the yellow next to the lighter green looks really nice. They really complement each other very well. Yeah, those two look good. Um, hmm. I think I will have space for blue. I probably don't want to add too much blue, so I might add a good amount of the um, the yellow green to this. And then I'll probably add a bit more yellow. And then just kind of like a small amount of green. And as you can see, the dots that are closer to the hand, those dots are like more crowded. But the dots that are going towards the outer edge, like towards the edge of the paper, they are not as crowded. And that's because when they're closer to each other, it makes it look darker. Um, so it gives, you know, just since like when you go back to shading, it'll make it look darker, just like very slight shadow. And then as they are more separated, it just makes it look lighter. And I want my tree to be darker towards the middle. And then as it goes towards the edge to be able to get lighter. So that's why I'm doing that. If you want, you can definitely make yours still more crowded towards the edge. That's definitely up to you. But just wanted to let you know. <laughs> that's what I was doing. Okay, so I'm going in with just some orange. And I'm going through, well, it's some red, but... Also have like some yellow on the brush and I'm kind of going through the yellow and the green because I thought it needed some red to just help it stand out. Yeah, because it was just missing something. Okay, that looked good. And then, hmm, can't forget about the grass. <laughs> Cannot forget about the grass. We're going to be doing everything else really in like the last... 10 minutes, kind of, yeah. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, so now what we can do is we're going to go back with the blue, with the green that we already had, and we're just going to now try to make a darker green again. Because I'm going to start working on the grass right now, and for the grass, I'll use just like some darker green and some light yellow, and just to give some so it's not flat so i'll do use a lighter and a darker shade of the same color yeah i think that'll be good and you can start if you want just by like you can outline the grass if that's easier but what i'm doing is like i'm outlining it but i'm coloring it slightly inwards but i'm leaving as you can see there's just like a nice little white triangle that's left there and that I'm going to go in with the yellow mm -hmm. to go in with it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think the grass definitely makes it 
you know look a bit more like a tree and also you can the sharpie is meant to outline if you want to outline later i might not outline with the sharpie but if you want to outline the grass probably not the hand probably just the grass but that'll be up to you you can decide and see how it looks in a couple of minutes and be like hey maybe it does not need the sharpie and then it's fine <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just adding in some more of the green to the grass. And also with acrylic, it dries pretty quickly. Like, mm, it also depends how much paint you add. But usually, like in about 30 seconds to a minute, if you don't add a lot of paint, probably a minute, yeah, it'll dry where you can just go add another layer. Which is great because you're able to work pretty fast and get a good amount done in a short amount of time. Unlike oil paint, which takes days to dry. And that's what I use. I use oil paint. <laughs> but you learn to love with it. You, you learn to love it and you learn to live with it. Because oil paint tends to have some really nice bright colors. Acrylic has really nice colors too. Yeah. But they, they both have their pros and their cons. But acrylic is perfect for very quick and fast. Those are the same word. Why am I using the same synonyms? For projects like these that are quick. All right. So adding some yellow just for where the highlights are kind of. Well, I'm deciding where the highlights are basically. But yeah. You can have all the highlights be like on the right side or on the left side um yeah there's not really like one side that's better than the other i think i'm doing mine on the right side yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it there also if your yellow is like not mm, if it's a little bit too clear you can always add a bit of white to it because sometimes depending on the brand some acrylic yellows they are like just very very transparent so they so you might have to mix it with some white and that'll help it like just look a little darker which is strange because you're adding the white which would normally make it lighter it'll make it lighter but it'll just make the paint more opaque so yeah <laughs> just putting that out there and i'll probably go in with some blue kind of like just to add some extra bit of shadow to it you don't have to do this step this is a bit just me but yeah i think it looks good yeah it really it's a nice shadow to it yeah because if you look on the left side and you look on the right side when i add the blue it it helps you know it helps my eye see it better and stuff okay that's looking good so now we're gonna work on the sky and we'll probably also add some of the light blue to the trees yeah, so I'm just mixing a light blue, using some blue and some white. You can make this as light as you want. I'm not going to make mine too light. I might make it lighter later, but for now, I think this is a good light blue to start with. Now, the other thing is you can always just like paint the sky a solid color. That could be interesting, but I'm going to continue with the pointillism. All right, so I'm going to keep making dots around it. But I think it definitely could be interesting, you know, if you have the solid blue around it. So if anybody wants to try that. <laughs> All right. And since these are supposed to be light, um, I'm not going to add a lot of dots next to each other. So they're going to be kind of spread apart a little bit for this project. Well, I mean, for the sky and so. Now, the other thing is you can make the blues that are closer to the grass. You can make those a little bit closer to each other and also make that blue a little bit darker. So kind of like as you slowly move up, the blue goes from dark to light. Similar to how the tree is. Yeah, that could be good. I'm also just going to start by adding some of the blue, very just small amounts of it within the tree right now. Alright, just some small little accents 
I think it looks nice. You might not like it, so it's okay. But I think it looks good. And I might go over the hand. I'm not too sure. Because it's kind of looking good right now. But if your hand is... If it's not as like as dark, if the color is not dark, you can definitely give it another layer. And I mean, for the for the dots, if a color is too light, then I would recommend to do another layer. But for this paint, I think it's doing pretty good. I don't think I have to do much second layers, so that's great. <laughs> but this is really coming out really well. Yeah, I'm, I really like how this came out kind of like seems like a tree and maybe during the spring yeah probably during the spring on a nice sunny clear day and it's just like waving and it's just filled with all different types of colors <laughs> yeah this looks good i realize this can also be done with markers because with the markers you just press down and you can make a lot of little dots but i wasn't sure if some, that might be too much after a while making all those dots but then again, you might like it better with the markers. All right. So this is good. I'm going to just make some darker blues and also make some bigger circles with the blues. Just, I think it'll help, like, bring your eye to the bottom, like, to start from the bottom and to slowly move up. That's why. All right. Just a bit of an up-close view of it. You can see all the different colors and everything. And from far away, they probably do blend in. Or like maybe if you um, squeeze your eye a little bit, the colors might blend. But I usually like to look at it from far away. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go over some parts of the hand that kind of just needs to be darker. All right. And do you see how now that I'm adding the new paint, you see the gloss, the sheen? Yeah, that's just the acrylic itself. But yeah, and just being very careful to like not go outside. I mean, <laughs> to not go outside of the line. And this is good because with flat brush, it's a great, it's the best brush really for when you're trying to get like some straight lines and clean lines. And I know there's like specific ways you can hold it to get a nice straight line and stuff. But once you know how to handle your flat brush, it's like you can do anything when it comes to painting because they're just so useful. I love flat brushes. I barely use the round brushes. I mostly use flat brushes for everything because they're very like versatile and they can do a lot. So that's great. And also I just realized the end of the brush, you could use that as a, to make dots. You know, like if you dip it in the paint and then you can make, because it's round, so <laughs> you can make dots with that. But we're not doing that. But just realize that. Okay, I think we just have to do pinky and then we're done. I don't think I have to go over the grass um, much. Yeah, the grass looks pretty good. Mm, sky looks pretty good. Yeah, everything's looking pretty good right now. Might add just some a bit more colors, but just a little bit more blues. Yeah, but besides that, everything is looking pretty great. Woo, awesome. This is really good. Because at first I was going to do a fall tree, but I decided to add the greens and the yellows to it. So it ended up not making it a fall tree, really. But it still looks like a beautiful tree, so I still love it. All right. Just adding some more colors to it. And you can definitely tell that like the dots that are closer to the tree, since they're also more, they're not spaced apart so far. It definitely does make that part of the tree look darker and it really grabs your attention. Yeah. So hopefully when you guys are done, you're able to place this from far away and just see how your eye, if your eye blends in any of the colors or if you don't see the dots anymore. Um, or try it with someone else and see what they think and be like, does this look like a painting? Do you see any dots? You'd have to probably add, use smaller dots for that because we use pretty big dots, but that's okay. All right, so 
just adding some final touches real quick but i think we are pretty done yeah <laughs> i'd say we're pretty good right now so just some up close view of it this is very nice it's like a rainbow tree and stuff i don't know <laughs> this is great all right thank you everyone for joining me in this video hope you had a great time and i'll see you in another video okay bye